RTTX 165220. This is a two pack. We're looking at the A rail car. Uh, I think on this video I'm going to go ahead and combine the A and the B car uh, into one video. Um, just to shorten the time up, we got more rail cars coming in. I don't have time to, to separate them. So let's just walk around this car real quick. Um, this is an 89 foot all steel flat car. Just came in today. Looks pretty good. And um, when you're looking for damage on these cars, you typically want to look right inside here. That's if they ever derail. That's where they'll hit the, the rail and have damage. But uh, that car looks really good. Let's walk around it. Oh, this is interesting. So this car here, you can see, um, it says unit A there, right? But you can see where it used to be unit C. So this car was at one time part of a three-pack, but then they changed it to a two-pack. Why, I don't know, but that's just kind of interesting. Car style is a 2 BSF 11. Good looking rail car. Okay, so whenever there's a two-pack or a three-pack, instead of having a coupler, you'll have a draw bar. That way this thing moves and uh, all, they always move together. All right, so there's that car. That's the A car. All right, great looking car. Now let's look at the B car. There's the B car there, all right. And the B car is actually the first car in the pack, not the second car. I know it's kind of odd, but uh, that's just the way, that's just the way they do it. And we'll look for the uh, stencil on this that'll say unit B. And there it is right there. Unit B. So why is this one unit B and the other one unit A? You can see the same car number, RTTX 165220. Why is this one unit B and the other one unit A? Well, it has to do with this little thing right over here. That's called the handbrake, right? The handbrake, there's a mechanical brake on one end of the rail car. This is considered one rail car, even though it's two rail cars together. It's considered one rail car unit. One rail car unit consisting of two rail cars. So the B end is where everything starts. Everything gets numbered based on standing on the B end, right? So if you're standing on this rail car right here, uh, there's the brake. This is the B end, the brake end. So everything on this side is the right side. Everything on that side is the left side. This is the B unit. That's the A unit over there, okay? So uh, we'll just take a walk around the uh, B unit. Let's take a look at the center sill. That's a nice straight center sill. C7 by 12.25 cross member over there. Good looking body bolster over there. The body bolster does go, the body bolster bottom cover plate does go below the center plate, the center sill bottom cover plate or center sill bottom flange. Okay. Good looking car. Looks like um, three by six longitudinal cross members. All seal deck looks fantastic. All right. You see the side sail completely flush deck. Everything looks really good here. Same thing, if this car was ever damaged, the damage would be right inside here, right? That little transition area, but it looks fantastic. This car hasn't been involved in a wreck or anything. All the cross members look fantastic. All right. We passed by that, trans that, that uh, transition area of the center sill, we'll see what we're looking for as well. Right there, the deep section, this is where all the damage happens, okay? Other part where, uh, oh look at that, that's a brand new wheel there. That's brand spanking new. Look at that, look how pretty that is. Brand new roller bearing. Huh, nice, you can see that's all nice and shiny and the other one is not nice and shiny. You can, see that's, you can tell that's new. Other place where they'll, where they'll be damaged at is this corner right here. Um, if if it gets sight swipe or if it hits something else, uh, that's where you'll see damage at. Like that one over there, you can actually see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it looks like there's a little. There's a wee little something there, right? It hit something, but insignificant, nothing major. Okay, this is the draw bar here. That's how the draw bar looks up underneath there. 
right? Fantastic. Take a look at the center sill. Looks great. All right, so obviously if the side sill, which is this piece over here, you know, if this is if this isn't being damaged and that deep section isn't being damaged, that means everything underneath here is gonna be protected as well. So all this will be in great shape. So uh there's no telltale signs of any damage. Okay, so this is the B unit. Let's take a look again at the A unit. They're identical rail cars. Okay, let's take a look underneath. All right. Oh, so let me um, let me kind of explain to you that the handbrakes on this car. Since the brake is only on that side over there, the mechanical brake, this thing has air brakes and mechanical brakes. So the, the air brake on that side will just set the, I mean, sorry, the mechanical brake, that, that lever you crank up on over there, will set the brakes on these two truck sets here, but it will not on this side over here. This side does not have any mechanical brake levers. Um, well, it has all the same brake levers, but not for mechanical use. I see the air line, so the air line goes through here and it'll set the air brakes, but not the mechanical brakes because the car isn't set up with an air brake. All right, so let's take a look at this car. See what, see what there is to see. You can see here, that area right there looks fantastic. The end sills look good, the side sills look good. Looks like some brand new brake, or some newer brakes there. See the fresh blue paint? All that stuff gets taken off, but that just shows you this car was still in, in good running condition when it was taken out of service. You can see uh, that area there looks good. Let's take, a look, let's take a look at some cross members. Now these two rail cars are identical, so let's take a look at more cross members up underneath the car. All right, so there you have the body bolster. It's a piece that goes over there with the center plate where the uh, trucks connect to the rail car, all right? This brake rod right here will actually be disconnected. That's really the only thing that's connecting the, um, this rod right here is the only thing that's connecting um, the rail car to the trucks. So just uh, we'll torch that. You can see this is the second cross member. The second cross member is almost identical to the first cross member, the latitudinal cross member except it has a bigger gusset there, the gusset connecting the cross member, we call that the X2 cross member to the center sill. You can see the center sill is that main beam right over here, okay? And then the third cross member, we would call that X3. Same thing as X1 and 2, C7 by 12.25 looks like, except these have a kicker, usually like a 4x4 four by, four by 3 8 inch angle iron. Uh, and uh, that's what it looks like all the way down. Okay, all the cross members look fantastic. You can see there, there isn't any damage at all on this car. That's a really nice and straight rail car. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, uh, let's go look at the um, center sill. At the shallow section. So you can see here, something was kind of scratching this thing up here, but that's pretty minor stuff. It wasn't, it, there really isn't any damage to this car. Very minor stuff. And you can see here the rub rail, th these rub rails right here, uh, there's a little bit of damage here. It looks like when they're loading something up, we got a little bit of damage, but those uh, get cut off anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. All right, let's take a look at the center sill. What that looks like, all right. Looks really good. C7 by 12.25 cross member over there. That, that'll be the X1 cross member. Great looking uh, longitudinal cross members. All right, that's all there is to it. 